Welcome to Golden Mastermind Seminars Radio with your host, Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. A little dose of coffee there. Welcome to GMS Live, Golden Mastermind Seminars Live, Tuesday Live Facebook. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Josh Moran, welcome to Facebook Live here. This beautiful afternoon, record-breaking heat wave in California. Welcome to our call. Scott Lucas in Massachusetts. Welcome to Facebook Live this late afternoon for you. Hey there, Jeff. Good to connect with you. Welcome, 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 everyone. We will have a absolutely packed Facebook Live this afternoon. J.A. Johns, welcome to the Facebook Live. Amanda Weger, always a pleasure to have you on a Facebook Live from Canada. Awesome woman. Great to see your face too, Amanda. You are top tier first class. Josh, good to have you here. Charles Anthony Jablonski, welcome. Vicki Lee, did you pass? Pa- Vicki, did you pass your real estate exam? I'm sure you did. I already know the answer. That is Vicki Lee, first class business owner in, in Pennsylvania. Aaron Knight, how are you this afternoon, Aaron? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who else wants to say hello this afternoon? A lot of great information going on in the world. I've been, spent a lot of time behind the scenes watching what's going on behind the veil. Any of you know who Millie Weaver is? That was a very interesting story that happened last Friday. Last Friday. So if you know anything about Millie Weaver and want to share that with me, share that to me in Messenger. Here's a couple of books I have for you. I see every one of you so far I know that's on the Facebook Live. So... Welcome, welcome, welcome. So here is a old school book that I bought in a used bookstore several years ago, over 25 years ago. This book is called Secret of the Ages, Robert Collier. This is a first edition copy. It is very beat up, 1948. Then here's a gem. Now, if you can find one of these books, I collect classic books, and I collect several of them in mint condition. Here's a, here's a Think and Grow Rich hardback. This is a 1964, here you go, look at this, Napoleon Hill, 1964, Think and Grow Rich. Now you can buy this for, the condition mine is in is mint condition. So this is a very, this is the original, well the original comes out in 1937, so this was about a fourth, fifth edition. I have a I have a uh, Wizard of Oz 1944 edition, Frank Baum. It is not illustrated by the original illustrator. So Jeffrey Matheny says, Happy Taco Tuesday. Welcome, Jeffrey. Kate Grace, welcome. Tracy, awesome coaching you. Lisa, Faye, Pizanza, look forward to coaching you tomorrow. So I'm moving to the inspirational portion of today's call. This call is dead. And Rick Lease, welcome to Facebook Live. This call is dedicated to everyone who is in recovery, sobriety, and some level of letting go. And the... This is not the topic of the call, but this is also the theme of it. The pleasure isn't worth the pain. The pleasure is not worth the pain. So that is one of my mottos. One of my clients also asked me to do a serenity prayer with him earlier this morning, and I was honored to do that with him. So thank you. We're going to move into the inspirational portion of today's Facebook Live. I have about 20 minutes of rock-solid content for you, and then I want to see you go out and produce some results living in the solution in a very relaxed body as it's about 108 degrees here in the beautiful San Joaquin Valley. Antonio Reyes, welcome to Facebook Live. So the topic for today's call is the psychology psychology of change, the psychology of change. So changing is an option. It's not mandatory. It's not something you have to do. Changing is an option. So you have the option every single day to change the way you've been changing. You can also change your behavior. You can change your location. You can move on any given given day. So, but change also is a skill. To be able to change, there's a mechanism of change. And to really understand change is to understand why you do what you do. I have coached 23 years. Oh, my 23 anniversary, the end of 23 years will be this September. So 23 years I've been coaching, 60,000 hours one-on-one, 12,000 clients. Now, I, I am a master of change. I'm not master of disguise, but a master of change. There's a, I have a gentleman named Bill Bragg 
who is a top tier magician. I also coached another top tier magi magician, Marco the Magician, and they are very, very skilled at the art of magic. Now, you don't have to be a magician to change, but change is a choice. Change is also a commitment. To change, it's also required of you to no longer, to no longer be in denial. You're in a place called rigorous honesty, and you start to focus on what to change. And then you start to change how you've been changing. So that change becomes an always changing. It means you're able to adapt and adjust. You no longer hold weight on your body due to the stuff feelings that you have. You no longer relapse emotionally because you're always letting go. You're human. You're going to relapse occasionally, but the increment of time is going to be small increments of time, not days, not weeks, not months, not years, because you are learning how to change. So change is a reflex. So to change your anger, to change your resentment, to change, to change your rage, to change your rejection, abandonment, overwhelmed feelings, grief, apathy, pride, to change those emotions is to understand why you do what you do. The more you understand that you're not the mind-body connection of the event, so that means that you're starting to separate. You're no longer seduced by going over to the family on a Sunday and being violated. You're no longer seduced into loaning someone money that doesn't pay you back because you feel guilty. You're able to confront a situation. I coached a woman today who had challenges confronting her webmaster because she had paid her webmaster X number of dollars and the product wasn't delivered. She felt very uncomfortable in what she considered to be confrontation. So the change would be to let go of guilt associated with asking for what is mine. The guilt associated with asking for what I deserve. The guilt associated with asking because we're conditioned to to children to be seen, not heard. We're, we're conditioned not to ask, not to pry into other people's affairs. So a lot of guilt and shame, and they're two different distinctive situations. So here's guilt. Guilt is what other people did to you and did to me. They guilted us. Society guilted us. There's a lot of guilt going on right now in society about your roots, your origins. I mean, a lot of situations are going on. Guilt is used to control you by society. People are guilting you for not wearing a mask. Shame is more personal. Shame is over here. Shame is you were molested, you were violated, you sold $2,000 out of the cash register. Shame is something you did that was deeply personal. You relapsed and you're ashamed of that and you're holding on to that. So when you're able to separate your feelings from the emotions, that's so when you're holding on to emotions, what you end up doing is it typically holds on to you. You end up dragging these emotions around. Oftentimes it manifests on your body. It can manifest in weight. It can manifest into a dis-ease, it manifests into an inflammation, it manifests into an injury, it manifests into headaches. So these are mind-body connections. It can manifest primarily in your gut, irritable bowel syndrome, prostate challenges, menstrual challenges, also shows up in gut issues, H. pylori, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial organisms, and then constipation, you have elimination challenges and other situations that are manifested by what we hold on to. As you begin to surrender, let go, no longer be the mind-body connection. One of the situations that holds so many people back is this unconscious consciousness called not good enough. It's an approach and avoid situation. You approach success, we go, whoa, I'm not sure if I can handle it. And then the ego goes, I'm not sure if I can put myself out there. Now, out there is not like out there. Out there is really right here. And the anxiety you have is about putting your hands on the keyboard and writing the content. Christine Lena, good to see you on this afternoon's call. Henry, good to see you. Um, Berenice, good to see you on today's Facebook Live. Tracy, good to see you. I'd like to acknowledge everyone I see that shows up in Facebook Live because you deserve that acknowledgement. And so that's part of change, being able to be acknowledged by someone. You don't have to do anything to be acknowledged, but that would change your behavior. See, many people think they have to produce or they have to get recognized. They have to go out and be somebody. Well, recognition is going to come from recognizing yourself. So Aaron says, my eczema is cleared up with letting the, with the letting go press process, always letting go. Eric Picard, good to see you, my brother. Christine Elena, thank you for being on Facebook Live here today. So Aaron is explaining to you that eczema, so eczema is a skin issue. It primarily shows up on hands, toes, feet. So eczema also shows up in scalp. And so when Josh says being good enough is one of them. Good to see you, Quinn. 
So when you, when you have eczema, it means something is under your skin. My brother was born with eczema. I was born with asthma. Asthma in a child is a child that doesn't want to be here. Eczema is a child is a child that gets under someone's skin. So, I mean, this is where you start to understand mind-body connections. Now, I was told I had to go to Arizona. I had to be in dry heat. That didn't happen. I was told I wouldn't be able to play sports. My asthma went away when I stepped into the seventh grade and went out for the seventh grade football team. Miraculous to me, I didn't have to take prime team mist. I stopped taking steroid shots. I went off of a diet and my asthma miraculously went away, never to come back. I, I mean, it is not, it's a phenomenon that I can't explain. I was so done with it. The pain was great enough. I no, I no longer required my parents' attention. I no longer required being in a rocking chair. I no longer required being rocked to sleep. I didn't require the attention anymore. I started to let go of it. That was when I was 13 years old in the seventh grade. Now, we all have the ability to let go. We all have the ability to change. But change requires a commitment, meaning that if you don't know what to change, then you'll live in the dialogue and the narrative. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand this. This doesn't make sense. I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to be. I'm not sure if I can put myself out there. Whoa, picking up that telephone. I'm not sure if I can make that phone call. Well, that's the way we tend to communicate to avoid change. When we're avoiding changing, what we're really doing is we're procrastinating. We put off paying the taxes, then we borrow money to pay the taxes that we didn't use. And now, now we're overwhelmed again. So, I mean, this is what we tend to do. We tend to wait till the last minute so we can just pull it off. Oh my God, I just pulled it off because we don't have habits, we don't have systems, we don't have a routine, we're not organized because that would contradict being overwhelmed. If you're addicted to being overwhelmed, then what you're really addicted to is pulling situations off in the last minute. And by pulling it off in the last minute, you get to live the cardio cocktail. It's a combination of adrenaline and cortisol that your body consumes. It's a neurochemical you become emotionally addicted to. It's a fight or flight mechanism that we hold on to. And when the pain is great enough, it often shows up in inflammation. It'll show up in gut issues, it'll show up in your bank account, it'll show up in someone leaving you, it'll show up when you get fired. I mean, it's for your determination to understand when the pain is great enough. Rock bottom is not the, deter is not, is not the determination that you wanna be at. Rock bottom can also be rock middle. You can be right there today when you are committed to change. Change is a choice, change is a commitment. It's an option, because you can consistently do the same thing over and over and create the same outcome. And, but if you're willing to change, if you're really willing to change and committed to change, then it's your responsibility, the ability to respond, to start to put into plan a simple routine to facilitate change. But change is a facilitated process. It doesn't come from how do I, how do I, how do I. It's not the how do I mechanism. Change is the let go mechanism. It means you're letting go of a conditioned behavior. This requires honesty and acceptance. So you can't be honest when you don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. My whole childhood was a blur. Well, your whole childhood wasn't a blur. What it means is you have selected memory loss. You have, you have selectively chosen not to remember a series of events because they were either too painful, they were too shameful, there were situations that you don't remember, don't understand, and your body repressed them. The suppressed emotions are the ones that you fuck up consistently. You do the same thing over and over. You keep avoiding, you keep debting, you keep missing payments, and you wait till rock bottom. So Cassie says, I'm in a place of rigorous honesty. Congratulations. That is my exceptional client, Cassie Opa Turcott. So she announced on a, live, on a live video here, she's in a place of rigorous honesty. That is changing. Now, what rigorous honesty means, it means that there's a level of lying that you've accepted. It's, it's too black and white to say you're a pathological liar. But it means mostly you lie to yourself because you say, I don't know, I don't understand, this doesn't make sense. And you keep saying this over and over to avoid changing. Now, that doesn't mean you're not a good citizen or a good parent or whatever it, mean, whatever it means, it means. But here's what this means. When you are rigorously honest, that's changing because there's no more lying. There's no more cheating. There's no more cheat days. There's no more eating junk food. I coach people who are addicted to junk food. So they drive by a fast food place and they're actually, their tongue salivates because it's that neurochemical, that high they get from the salt on the french fries, the greasy burger, the combination of the ketchup, the mustard, the, the pickles on that on that bread with those thin burgers or whatever it is you because that is that also creates a high. I once coached 
a Coca-Cola addict. I've coached many, many addictions. People are emotionally addicted to a set of feelings and they act them out in certain ways. So changing isn't white knuckling. That's not changing. So losing weight isn't changing because changing is being able to do this. You separate the feelings from the events that hold the weight in place. If you're going to release weight, it's not from losing it, it's a release. You're releasing the feelings you hold on to so that you're, so you don't stuff yourself and the body doesn't hold the weight. The body will hold the weight in different places and different areas to protect you from being, per, from being violated. So that's one of the stories that many people hold on to. Holding on to weight also keeps you from being attractive, it keeps men from hitting on you or women from hitting on you. And many people have the story that if I lose the weight, I'll leave my husband, I'll leave my wife. I mean, this is another story that people hold on to. So the change would be going, what? wait a minute, I'm 45 years old. I, I do, I am honest, I was traumatized as a child, but that traumatization no longer defines me. And see, that's the change. You change the way you perceive the story. So when the story is no longer the story, now you're in a situation to change. I'm not good at attracting men, all the men I attract are. All I attract are cheerleaders, runway models, broken souls from broken homes. I attract, well, I used to know these two sisters that were, I knew when I was, when I was back in the day, and they used to say, Jeff, we're freak magnets. We both attracted you. Well, I was the freak they attracted. I mean, they actually believed that. They were freak magnets, and they attracted men who would steal money from them, violate them, take advantage of them. And they used to say this themselves. They used to believe it. We're freak magnets. Now, they came from a good family, and I mean, this is what happens to a lot of good people. We are freak magnets. We attract to our reality people and situations to fulfill our low self-esteem. Then we can say, see, this always happens to me. And then you go out in the dating world, you go, oh my God, I got one of these pictures, one of these, one of these vile pictures. Why does this always happen to me? It happens to you because it fulfills a feeling that you're neurochemically addicted to. When you're no longer the mind-body connection, then all of a sudden, all the men and women on the dating sites aren't freaks because you start to attract your reality, people and situations to fulfill a different set of feelings. All right, so Jennifer says, I am an emotional eater. I am changing my situation, tired of this extra weight. All right, so that's a, that's, that's a, that's a great commitment. Now, here's, here's what the art of change is, the psychology of change. So Jennifer comes out here and she's, she's honest enough. Here's another term you want to let go of, bold. Bold isn't being honest. Bold is a term you use that you're forcing yourself, oh, I've got to go out there and be bold. I mean, actually, just be yourself would be a lot easier. Well, I don't know who I am. Well, then decide who you are. That would be changing. And let go of the, I'm not sure if I can put myself out there. So some of you are creating statements right here. Well, change begins with rigorous honesty. It means that then change begins with acceptance. So there's honesty, acceptance, forgiveness, gratitude, and then there's an action plan. The action plan means that you go back to back days emotionally sober. It means you spend one whole day without criticizing yourself or others. And whether you're, it, whatever political side you're on, you want to do your best not to criticize the other side and just stay in the middle and focus on results, solutions, uh, how you can empower yourself and empower others. Do your best to go a whole day without being critical, being worried, being overwhelmed. Hi, Kayla. Good to see you on today's Facebook Live. Josh, just for today, Josh said. So Josh Morin is a success coach that I certified as a is a is this exceptional young man who I highly endorse. Jennifer, thank you for being honest out here and, and sharing a little integrity with us. So is change difficult or is change new? That's it's new. Change is not difficult. But when you create a difficulty before you start, now what you've created is you have created a force counterforce situation. There's Hind. Hind is, is on Facebook Live today from United Arab Emirates. She's a great closer, by the way. Hein, good to see you on here. Lynn Hernandez, welcome. Good to have you on here. Lynn, I don't know if I've met you before. If I haven't, feel free to request a free 20-minute coaching session with me. Now, I haven't, those of you who are new to the call today, this is a mint condition, think and grow rich. This is a 1964 think and grow rich, the great Napoleon Hill. I have two copies like this. You can buy these for around 100 bucks, give or take. And then here's a classic Robert Collier, Secret of the Ages. You should be able to find this. This is an original first edition copy. I've had this book for about 25 years. 
I found it in a used bookstore for one dollar once about the time. So Aaron is also being truthful out here. Michael Cole, good to see you, my brother. Aaron is saying difficulty is being a noble struggler. Now, Aaron is one of my best clients. I've coached Aaron is someone that if I put if I put the, the, the wall of change on here, the wall of fame of change. So Aaron would go on there also. Aaron would be someone I've really watched him change in the last two years. Mike Green in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Good to see you, my brother. Berenice, I listen to Think and Grow Rich every single day. Berenice, early in my career, I bought Think and Grow Rich from Nightingale Conant on cassette. 1992, I bought, it was a six cassette audio series originally, and it actually had a few cuts of Napoleon Hill talking about his son. His son his son Blair was born deaf, and so there's a few interviews of Hill. There's also a book called A Lifetime of Riches written by Michael Ritt, which chronicles Hill's entire lifetime. I learned a lot of content about Napoleon Hill that I didn't understand or didn't know about. Hill's first book was not Think and Grow Rich. His first book was called The Laws of Success. It was written in 1928. It's about this thick. Think and Grow Rich was in 1937. Hill miraculously lost the rights to think and grow rich in a and in a um, in a divorce and it was amazing how that just happened Larry Wasserman good to see you this afternoon Quinn Curtis thank you very much good to, to, good to have you on today's Facebook live no longer the mind body connection to the events that shape the feelings that's what letting go is when you're able to separate your feelings from the events then you are no longer the mind body connection to the events that shape the feelings. Now, the benefit of that is, is you don't relapse anymore. One of my clients asked me, he goes, can you give me a piece of advice about relapsing? I said, well, here's, here's what I use. The pleasure isn't worth the pain. I mean, this is why I don't relapse, because the pleasure is not worth the pain. And if the pleasure is worth the pain, then you'll relapse, and you'll continue to recreate the same situation to fulfill the same set of feelings. Change is a choice, change is a commitment. Go, go one whole day without criticizing yourself. Live in rigorous honesty day. Accept where you are with, with gratitude. If you're $100,000 in debt, accept it and be grateful that you're in a position to be honest about it and you're in a position to do something about it. If you have no job and you're in the NFL club, no funds left, no friends left and not for long, accept that. Accept your humility. Accept that you have no friends because of things you've done. Start to create simple, subtle changes. Be a better ambassador of change. Be a better student in the laws of success. Be a better person. Be more humble. Go out and create more goodwill and more ambassadorship for other people. And let go of some of the pain you hold on to. Jeffrey Combs, president and founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. If you have not received a free 20-minute coaching session and you would like to access that option, go right up there in Messenger. Leave your phone number and I will respond to you within 24 hours. I will be hosting a Facebook Live tonight at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is 9 p.m. Pacific. The NFL Club. Mike, is, Mike Green says, NFL. There's three categories of NFL. I'll break this down for you as I'm leaving here. The NFL is no friends left, no funds left, and not for long. Have a great afternoon, everyone.